Joy TV recommends this program for mature audiences. Episodes may contain alcohol references, coarse language, and frank, open discussions about adult themes. 2020 was going to be such a big year for Wayne and Tom, but not because of the pandemic. Yeah, we were going to surprise you with a brand new show on Joy TV. But the pandemic came along, put a stop to production, so let's do a half assed version. Let's call our friends. Who are we going to call it? Oh, oh, that's up to you, darling. Let's call it Cocktails with Wayne and Tom. Oh, cheers. cheers. Live from lockdown, it's Cocktails with Wayne and Tom. With special guest Marsha Hines. Now here's your hosts, Wayne and Tom. Wayne and I are so excited to premiere our first interview for Joy TV, Australia's only LGBTIQA plus media outlet. Look, our next guest, or our first guest, she has a list of accomplishments. Accomplishments? You can say that for me. <laughs> the list goes on forever. I could read it for years, so I'm going to do it shorthand. I'm gonna, yep, she's Australian theatre royalty, crowned uh, Australian queen of pop. She's the mama of disco and the nicest person in the industry. Her, all right, stop. I want to actually meet Marsha. <laughs> so, hello, Marsha. Hi, guys. How are you? We are it's so-, so good. Well, as you know, we've been in lockdown for almost six months in Melbourne. We now have an 8 p.m. curfew. So we're starting to get a bit of cabin fever. I'm, I can't imagine what it's like, you know, because we've been relatively free in Sydney, you know. So, um, but even say, having said that, it's just a strange. I'm used to getting on planes, you know. I'm used to doing things. I ain't doing nothing, you guys, nothing. So, yeah, you know, that's what we wanted to know. So what have you been doing? Just enjoying time because this is probably the first time in my career I've actually had social time, you know, because I'm yeah. usually saying, friends, I'll catch you later. Got to get on a plane. Got to go do, the, do this gig. And, or they're doing something and we, we can't catch up. But now I've spent lots of time with my daughter and she's just a little thing. She's like eight. And oh, wow. I pick her up from school with her dad and, you know, she's got two dads. So it's pretty special. Yeah. Oh, two dads. Oh, yay. yay. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I mean, we have three children, but ours are adults now. My baby was born in, oh, our oldest was born in 1990, so we won't give away our age. <laughs> are you serious? Are you serious? Yeah, our, our youngest is 25. 27, don't yeah. tell her, but that's okay. Yeah. Wow, this all oh, congratulations. I think it's a beautiful thing, I do. You know? Well, yes, we were very, we were pioneers. We were out there way before it was trendy. I hear you, I hear you, I hear you way before because it's relatively popular now, you know? And yeah, well and truly. Quite, yeah, quite a few of my, my boyfriends have got their children and I think, you know, everybody deserves love and the madness of what a family brings. Oh, exactly. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it was good to hear because I, I, when this lockdown first started, I was going to be one of these people. I was going to learn French, read a book, you know, do all this. No, no I would have talked to you and I was going to do everything. <laughs> and nothing. But I like it. Yeah, no, nothing. No, so I, was, I wanted yeah. to study Italian and I wanted to study a bit of piano because I play really badly. But I'm, I, look, I've just enjoyed it, you know. Like, what, what do you do? Who, who are we going to call? <laughs> Who's going to change it? <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, I mean, because we're quite sad. At, at the moment, you should be in Melbourne or finishing up with Shrek where you're going to. Wayne and I were lucky enough to go and see at the opening night. I was, it was so sad you, and you weren't there. I was so excited. And then Tom goes halfway down the red carpet, Marsha's not on tonight. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, I was doing um, Velvet in Adelaide. I did a, a show in, at the Adelaide um, Fringe Festival. It was, yeah, it was a burlesque show. Oh, it's pretty nice <laughs> <laughs> lots of eye candy let's put it like that yeah oh beautiful oh, velvet we've done velvet before and yes this is velvet rewired so this is a new version of velvet and after i'd done shrek i was supposed to be at the opera house like in about two weeks gone nothing honey so when, we, when do you think we're going to get to see you again on stage playing the, dra- the dragon well i don't know that that um shrek's gonna um happen again, which is, oh, wow. you know, the saddest thing was I'd done um, Velvet Rewired in Adelaide and flown, after closing night, I flew to Melbourne, had wonderful digs, 
wonderful um, a hotel on the park. I'm thinking this is great because I, I travel with my cat, right? And so my cat and I settled in on the Monday. We had a meeting on the Tuesday. Um, and all these poor kids, all these kids are oh. so hard, guys. I mean, you know, they've got the longest apprenticeship and the shortest career, you know? Yeah. They were all told it's over. Well, look, I'm still so happy we got to see you at the Palms. Oh, cool, yeah. yeah. That was an amazing night for me. Yeah. It was great. I mean, my thing is to perform. I, I, obviously, I'm a workaholic, but I can actually handle this downtime because I think, you know, most important thing in a downtime, you guys are in, in a relationship. I'm in one, too. you got to be able to hang with your partner. Exactly. And the, look, the good thing about it is we actually like each other, so we haven't killed Amen. each other. <laughs> no, when you like each other, it's so easy. Can you imagine how, how terrible? Because most people say, I've got to go to work. That's their escape. Yeah. You know, and, and can you imagine how terrible it must be if you don't like the person that you're with? Yeah, exactly. Mm, that's terrible. Look, so <laughs> we're all at home. So who is Marsha at home? So you're a tracky dacky and a tinny girl, or you like a martini and stilettos? <laughs> I'm, never, I'm a non-drinker. I've never, I've never been a drinker. So, but what I do do is I make an effort, you know, because I don't think you should. I went to finishing school as a kid, and they taught us that you shouldn't have when your partner leaves or your husband leaves home. When he comes home, you have such, should have something different on. You shouldn't have your your pajamas and you know your UGG boots. Um, do you mind giving him some etiquette classes? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> no one why. The other day, I said it's day seven. Can you please have a shower? Hands. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible. No, look, I mean, I get it, you know. I mean, I don't have the full makeup on or anything, but I make an effort, you know, because I braid my hair and I put, today I put a scarf on because it's Saturday, so, you know. But, yeah, I make an effort. I'm <laughs> loving the scarf, though. Oh, thank <laughs> you. I love that scarf. I love a scarf, honey. Yeah. Yeah. I can't believe you give away all my... <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I can. I can. So look, Marsha, we did have been able to see you on TV, though. So you've been part of The Voice, and, you, you know, you took over as mentor for Kelly Rowland's team, obviously, yes. when lockdown came. What's it like being back on telly again? I love it. It's the one thing. I love mentoring, you know, because as a performer, even as a hairdresser, right, you've got all this knowledge stored. And then, yeah, that was my cat that just stopped. I'll show you. <laughs> Her name is Sister. Oh, tell us, oh, this is Millie Minogue. Hello, Millie. Look for sister. <laughs> <laughs> come, come, come. Oh, cats, they never come when you want. She's just looking at me. But, <laughs> you know, look, I, I just, performance to me is such a large part of my life, right? And I, I look forward to doing it. I just, that's what I do. But mentoring the kids was like... Oh, I idle all over again if you get my drift, you know? Yeah. And they were wonderful. Yeah. And, and Kelly was so gracious and nice. And the great thing was Kelly said, we, got, we have a, a winner in our team, and we did. Oh. Well, you did too, didn't you? Like uh, Chris Sebastian? Yeah. So it's not rigged because Guy was on there, you know, it wasn't... No, no, Guy wouldn't have voted for his brother, if anything, not, you know? But, um, yeah. no, I, I know Chris because when he was a younger boy, he'd come to the studio with um, Guy. So, oh, of course. Yeah. He's, he's a real gigger. He does lots of live gigs. So he's a, a real performer, you know, and um, I was very happy for him. I was, look, it's a very, here we go. It's, oh, where are you guys? Hang on. It's a very, uh, that, no, that's my cat. Okay, hang on. Sit here. Here you go. Here she is. Oh, uh, look. She's gorgeous. She's a beautiful, she knows it too. She knows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's a beautiful girl. But um, so when, look, the truth of the matter is, you know, you're plucked out of obscurity, guys. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, Australia knows you. Mm. And it must be such a hard... I mean, I used to oh. just wonder how the kids went about it when we did Idol, because it was hard, you know? And mm -hmm. then, you know, um, electronic media and um, all this um, Instagram, Facebook, it wasn't happening. It was just starting to gain momentum. Yeah. So, you know... They were lucky. And look, it's really weird how you were the judge for Guy Sebastian, was it 2003, and now you're peers. It's, it, it, it's really nice and beautiful to see that, you know, you can actually see someone's career grow. Yeah, look, I must be very honest about Guy. He's gotten to where he's got because he's, worked, he's got a great work ethic. And I think the only way you can do well is to have a great work ethic and listen to people that surround you that, who are advising you. Yeah. 
Say, listen. Yes, yes. <laughs> I mean, I love the look. It gives you the look. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Marsha, I think I think it's time for us just to snuggle out and get to know you just a little bit better. So we're just going to do ten fast questions just to get you know, get to know you a little, little closer. Easy. Okay. Alrighty. Bubbles or beer? Well, non drinker. She she answered that. She might like bubbles. Oh yeah. I'd say, I'd say bubbles. Bubbles. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. Coffee or tea? Tea. Tea or oh. sharing a toothbrush, yay or nay? Yay. You, uh, kiss, you kiss them, so exactly that's my argument. I caught the other night him <laughs> using my toothbrush and went off, and he goes, 20 years, I've used it about 4,000 times, and I've gone, What? <laughs> now you're freaking out, right? <laughs> yeah, us, yeah, anyway, like you have another <laughs> now. Yeah, oh, where are we up to? Oh, yes, Backstreet Boys or One Direction? Backstreet Boys. Now, all the way. Back all right, yeah. controversy here. Favourite judge, Mark Holden or Dicko? Mark. Mm. What was wrong with Dicko? What's the goss? <laughs> no. yeah, nothing's wrong with, um, with Dicko, but I've known Mark for years. Mark yep. was managed by my manager when he was the carnation guy. So oh, him and Mark. Oh. Cool. Well, oh, yes, so um, bedtime attire, PJs or nudie? PJs, because I'm usually in a hotel. The catch is on fire. I can get out of there. <laughs> <laughs> you know that one? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm always thinking prepared. How do I get out? <laughs> <laughs> you better be, yeah. Favorite color? It would be purple. Oh, purple, yes. And oh, so you get a hard day, you get home, comfort food, chocolate or ice cream? Chips. Oh, gee. See, he's savoury. I am savoury too. Yeah. I love savoury, but I do love sweet. But, you know, chip, good chips are nothing like a good chip. Okay, last one. Chris Hemsworth or Liam Hemsworth? Chris. Chris, all the way. Yeah. All the way, honey. Hello. Because he's got a new ad on TV. God, that's a fine man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying, you know. Yeah. I know. I actually caught Tom the other day on the mobile, and I said, "What are you doing?" He goes, "I'm exercising." And yeah, he was just watching Chris, Chris Hemsworth workout videos. <laughs> yeah, I get that. I get that. I <laughs> 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 yeah. Look, Marsha, I love little tidbit gossipy. No, well, I don't read New Idea. So that's anyway. I would say that. But I was reading that when you went and auditioned for hair back in the late 60s you also had a cousin that was auditioning at the same time and you ended up in an Australian production they went to a German production and oh, no 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 so we're talking about Donna Summer God bless you yes there we go yeah. I grew up with Donna and her sister Linda Linda and I are still very close and she's still in Boston and Linda was doing uh, Donna had left Boston to do Puggy and Bess and then hair in Germany and her sister auditioned for hair in Boston and got the gig. And Linda said to me, oh, look, why don't you audition? We can have fun. We'll be in, if you audition, I'm in the show. We can have fun and hang out. I said, no, nah, I'll still be stuck in Boston. And then lo and behold, the auditions happened in Boston for Australia. Jim wow. Sharman and Sandra McKenzie, they auditioned. And so I went to the audition and my girlfriend, Linda, and some of the cast were, were behind a, a curtain making faces. Well, I was auditioning. <laughs> <laughs> I kept it together and, you know, lo and behold, I got the gig. But, yeah, great times, man, great times. But as a 16-year-old going to audition for a role in another country, that, that's a pretty brave thing. Were you, were you an adventurous young lady or were you, you were chasing that, that, not the fame, but the, you know, the work? Yeah, more, more, more so the work, you know, um, the fame side of things. That's all very new. Before, when, when I was coming, because I came to Australia in 1970 to do hair. And when you entered the industry, you never did it to be famous. You just entered it because it was a cool thing to do. Or to me, it was like my calling, the one thing that made sense. And my mother saw that that's what I dug. So she encouraged me. I didn't have a stage mum, but she said, you know, this is a really amazing thing. If you can get this job... And I know you know what to do. I brought you up well, you know. And, and so, you know, when you're 16, man, you're bulletproof. Oh. <laughs> you know, you're ready yeah. for everything. You've had kids. You've been there too, right? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. well, well, we did. We were living in the country at the time, and our 16-year-old daughter got into Newtown Performing Arts as a ballet dancer. Wow. wow. I'm going to Sydney on my own. And I went, there's no way in hell 
So we packed up the family and actually moved into Newtown so she could attend her final years of high school. Yeah. That's, very, that's a really good parent. You know what I mean? That's yeah, and I just thought, what if I, I don't think it was, I trusted my daughter, I didn't trust but myself. The idea, from the country to the idea of Sydney. I mean, look, uh, what did we think of this? I, this is terrible, but I actually thought I was going to Austria. <laughs> <laughs> like all the other Americans, <laughs> like all the other you know, they know nothing outside of America. So, um, but I, 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 my mother and I worked it out that it was Australia. But um, it it didn't seem like a, a place that would be scary. I tell you what, it would have been scary, New York City. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what was the first few days of Australia like for you? I mean, it must have been just like Twilight Zone. <laughs> I was, <laughs> I was dancing. I was very happy. You need to know. Yeah. But I mean, and I had a, um, um, my, the person that took care of me until I turned 21 was Harry M. Miller. He was my guardian. So, yeah. and my mom had had words with him. You need to know. <laughs> Oh, well, my I, mother was tough fools, honey. My mother was a very strong. <laughs> so, and he got it. <laughs> Very quick. Well, although, uh, although I came to Australia pregnant, he got it. It wasn't his fault. <laughs> <laughs> are, are you so happy? I mean, of course, you're still here in Australia and, and you know, you, you've had. Are you glad that you did that all those years ago? Made that that challenge and that change and, and come along and you are our, our living legend. You know, you, 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 know, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't aware what was happening. Do you know what I mean? So in, in, in a, a career, you just go step by step by step by step. And then lo and behold, if you're blessed and, and you're willing to work and you're lucky, things go well for you, you know? So I just knew it was a great gig at 16. I knew it was a great gig. And as I said to you earlier, I speak to Linda, her name is Gaines, her son, um, Donna Summer, and all my friends, the best thing about this COVID thing, guys, is all my friends from Boston got in touch. Kids I went to school with to see how yeah, I was yeah, okay, yeah. And, and I'm checking on them. And that's been the best thing, you know, the communication that's happened with us all. Yeah, and you're hearing stories like that all over the world where, you know, if there is one silver lining with this whole pandemic is the fact that the connections with family and friends has yeah, just been reinforced. Reaching out and caring a bit more uh, for, for everybody. You know, I don't know what this is. All, I don't know what all this is. I mean, gosh, I wish I did. Mm. I don't know what it is, but I'm just seeing people's attitudes change immensely. And that's yeah. a beautiful thing, don't you reckon? Oh, well and truly. I think the world needed to have a bit of a reset. The skies are all clear around yeah. the world. Well, look at, you know, just how nature's bounced back. I mean, you've seen all those stories where the lagoon in Venice for the first time in ever, you can see the bottom, there's dolphins. Um, the skyline over New, over Los Angeles has been blue. Like, it's just... Skyline um, in China. You can see yeah. it at the Great Wall. You can actually see. Yeah, yeah. It's incredible. Yes. Anyway, a little... Um, I want to ask you a little secret. Oh. So we're, we're all masked down here at the moment, oh, and yeah. there's a little rumour that there might be a, a, a glittering mask. I, I think Wayne was trying to lean towards that maybe somebody was a unicorn <laughs> last year and maybe you might be a queen this year. No, <laughs> you're, you're not the bush ranger by any chance? No, definitely not the bush ranger. <laughs> um, I've not watched this year. But, um, yeah, look, I, I was really into a the Ninja Warrior show. <laughs> oh. You too? You told yeah. me all. No. Oh, really? We love it. We love it. Yeah. It was a great curve, but <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Two for one. Tom, you're corrigible. You're encouraging. You're, you're... <laughs> I, 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 I didn't get it. I, I watched The Masked Singer. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because the only way you're ever going to get me to sing in public would be with a big giant. <laughs> so, saying that, um, Marsha, what so if you went on the show, what creature would you like to do? I don't know. Your, who's your, you know, who's your, your spirit animal? An owl. Oh, see, that would be a beautiful. You could do that. Now, now that we've blown it. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. no. I don't know who wins. <laughs> uh, do you know who's who's singing? Because th this thing, 
I see the ads, the one with the... The full leg lizard, that one, whoever is... Eddie whoever, Perfect. He's who? I'm saying Eddie Perfect. You know who I think it just might be? I hope I don't blow it. I think it might be Chris Sebastian. Oh, whoever's voice that is, it's just a The other one that I'm really loving is The Wizard, and I think that's Isaiah. Oh, do you? Yes. All right, let's see. Yeah. Okay, well, well we've got it on tape now, don't we? <laughs> yeah, we do. Marcia, you must be got some new music coming for us. So we, we, we're listening to out for new Marsha? Yeah, look, I want to do um, an extension of the disco thing because I really think disco music's the bomb. You know, yeah. even when I'm performing, when you saw me at the Palms, right, you saw how people were just so joyous. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and it's, our, it's our vintage kind of music, you know, and, and I think we've got good memories for disco music. And I also want to do a spiritual um, album because I was brought up in church, and so I'd like to do a gospel album. Oh, wow. Yeah. That would be nice. Yeah. Like, so have you started doing any? Or are you in the studio? or? No, not in the studio, um, but my manager and I are sort of formulating it and trying to work out to get, I think it might use the, um, the Sydney Gate Choir. Oh, that'd be awesome. Yeah, that'd you, be incredible. You actually got to perform at the Sydney Mardi Gras back in 1990? or? I, mean, I closed it twice, okay. <laughs> 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 it ain't pretty. You need to know. Okay? <laughs> I'll close Mardi Gras twice. Um, and I, when my mother was alive, I remember, because I always go to the sound check, yeah. and I'll go home, and I'll eat something and have a sleep, because I have to be up by 4.30, 5 o'clock. Yeah, 4 or 5 o'clock. Yeah. 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 And so, and then I'll do a vocal warm-up, and then I did this gig, and I just appeared on a, a cherry picker. You know, mm. and the roar of the crowd was something I'll never forget. And then I went home after the gig. My mother said, how was it? How did your show go? I said, oh, Ma, I could die now. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I could die now. I know what it is to be loved, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're, that's amazing. we're too old for Mardi Gras now. Um, You're never too old. Yeah. I'm I, really... I went and I saw Cher. She was... She was... <sighs> She was fair. Look, we were really lucky at Joy here. We got to go and see Cher a couple of times. And, yeah, yeah. so we, we, we had a great little Cher moment. But, look, disco's all the rage. Maybe next year it'll be Marsha Hines and Kylie Minogue doing disco. Kylie yeah, yeah. just put out an album, didn't she? Just put out a disco. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it would be great to do some collaborations. I believe in them greatly. Oh, well and truly. Can't wait. Look, Marsha, we've had so much fun. Thank you so much for the time. Everyone, look, follow Marsha on social media, also at MarshaHines.com, and make sure you check out the tours. Look where she's coming. Definitely my love, see Velvet. My love, my love to all my brothers and sisters down there because, I mean, this ain't easy. So no. when you hear people in New South Wales say, we feel you, we feel it. Cause it Thank it, you. It, it, but for the grace of God, go I. So it could be us, you know? Yeah. It is so lovely that you say that, Marsha, but I'm going to say as a Victorian, if one more person from New South Wales rings and asks how I am, yeah, I'm going to go through <laughs> Shut up. Like, just leave us alone. Yeah, I yeah, I do. You guys take care and thank you. Anyway, thank you, Marsha. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Yeah, that was so much fun. How beautiful is Marsha Hines? Thank you, Marsha, for coming on. First interview here for Joy TV. Keep following us here at Joy TV and also on our socials. And get to see more celebrities from our lounge room to theirs. Hopefully soon we'll be out of lockdown and we can get to the studio. And look. Time to get a new drink, my love. I'm out. And for those that actually want to find the recipe for tonight's cocktail, follow our socials and you too can make the cocktail that I made from Marsha Hines. Cheers.